Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Corbin Bowers. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate being on the show with me. Yeah, this is, this. is I'm sure you've heard this a hundred times, but it's definitely first for me is having someone with the same first name as the school that they're coaching at. So spelled differently, obviously, but uh, a, a Corbin, a Corbin, unless it's Corbon and I'm just mispronouncing it. Uh, well, you're it's, not, right, it's, not, it's not French. It's not French. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so you're, you're new to the school though, just, uh, hired recently. We're talking end of July. You just kind of got there beginning of June. So, uh, we'll keep that in mind as, as we discuss how you're going, but, uh, you know, how is it walking into a program this late? Did, did, did the, hopefully the previous coach left you with the cupboard full as, as you're walking in? <laughs> it's, it's been an amazing transition. Everything happened really fast and there was a lot to take care of in the short amount of time, but, um, Historically, the program has experienced a lot of success and things have been done the right way here for a long time. So previous coaches and coaching staff before that left everything in a good spot to be able to take over as smoothly as possible when the transition happens this late. Yeah, no, that that is great. I mean, you guys, uh, the school made national tournament for NAI last year, so that's good stuff. And what, in terms of taking over and, and looking at at who's going to be graduating next year and kind of forward thinking, I'm sure you kind of already have to be looking at that class of 24, uh, and that sort of thing. And, and so kind of, how do you see your recruiting calendar looking as you move forward? Yeah, it was it's crazy. We had to put together pretty much 95% of our 2023 class when I got hired here in June one. And, uh, we announced our class yesterday, so that's all done and dusted. But at the same time, I got here and maybe a week or two later was already hitting the road for recruiting camps and tournaments here in the Pacific Northwest and very much wanted to build a deep pool of 2024 guys, um, local, countrywide, and then obviously internationals as well and make sure that we have the best possible pool that we can operate with while we get the season here next. So where do you like to, to go tournament-wise in terms of you mentioned, you know, regional, national, international. So, so where, where do you go to see players? How do you find talent or, or expect to find talent for your program? Yeah, I think, um, something I really take pride in and love doing is covering every, every little rock possible in the recruiting trail, um, to stick to that trail metaphor. So in my previous coaching experiences and continue to do so at Corbin university, trying to hit as many of the big showcases as we can, but also finding local ones in our region where we can identify maybe some talent that goes undiscovered or slides under the cracks. Um, so locally, we're hitting everything in Washington, Oregon possible, or Crossfire Challenge, Pacific Northwest, South, um, Pac Northwest. Um, so in all showcases, we'll try to get to one that'll cover most of the West Coast teams, just with so we perceive us being a stronger uh, pool building out of the West Coast. Um, we have good, I have good relationships with my network in Colorado as well. It's just as a camp there where the Rapids and then We'll imagine we'll expand on it, but also covering international students as well. And we do a lot of stuff here recently with junior college transfers as well. So I want to cover every possible player. I pride myself in recruiting to the best of my ability and finding everybody we can that fits our program in the university. Well, you mentioned camps. Are you going to have your own ID camps there at the school or how will that how? Yeah, so for CS, at least having two every recruiting cycle. So I'm um, kicking things off this year with a December camp. We're finalizing dates for that, but looking at one of the first two Saturdays in December. Uh, and then we, with how late I was hired this year, we weren't able to put together a summer ID camp, but we plan to do one and finding the right weekend to do so in the summer. But working off of those two, trying to get as many kids on campus as possible that can train with us, train under the coaching staff, and also experience campus, our field, eat in the cafeteria, and just have a really unique visit experience. Um, on top of us, NAI, the guys being able to come and train with us outside of a camp experience. Um, but that's potentially somebody that can come and train with us three times, four times, and really get a feel for our style of soccer. In well, And don't forget to post those on Discover College Soccer once you get your dates. But... Uh... Whether it's at a camp or at an event, showcase, wherever it is, kind of what do you foresee as making up kind of your hierarchy of things that you're looking for in a player, both on the field and off the field? Yeah, I think we get repetitive here and everybody obviously focuses on the on the field stuff and how that fits. So I'll probably touch on that last. But for me, 
with what the university stands for and what I see as building the right culture, work ethic is extremely important to me. Uh, I want to see players that pride themselves on being the hardest working player on the field based on their position so they can, based on their responsibilities on the ball, off the ball, do they do it in an excellent manner and they work as hard as possible to get the best outcome for their team. Um, we are looking for those little interactions. How do they treat their coach when they get some how do they treat their teammates? How do they react when they're losing? I want to see like their moral character as well in play because college soccer is so challenging and these guys come in as young guys and playing against men. I want to see how they react to adversity. Um, and then from there, we dive into the soccer piece. We pride ourselves on being a very strong possession dominant team. Uh, we want to take the game to the opposition. So we look for guys that are very comfortable in the ball, brave on it, but can move it at a quick rate. Um, and then guys that are willing to press. I want to pride ourselves on our pressing ability and how we can win the ball quickly in the final third. So we look for guys that can cover ground quickly, that understand pressing triggers and, and succeed in a pressing system as well. Okay. Well, in terms of, you know, you kind of mentioned internationals and JUCOs. Obviously, NAI that, that that tends to be a, a major source of recruiting. So, you know, how do you how do you see them fitting in? How much of your roster do you see that making up? Do you look at the uh, the transfer portal at all? Uh, you know, does that come into play? Well, so you know, thinking about our roster this year, um, to be honest, we only have two internationals that will be on the squad this year, uh, and then the junior college transfers coming in. I think it's four or five of them. And then the rest of our guys are Washington, Oregon, California players. Um, and that seems to be pretty typical. I think, you know, historically our squad has been at maybe eight internationals on, on a strong year and another four or five junior college transfers as well. And then we try to really find that best talent in Washington, Oregon, California, and Idaho as well. Um, and we foresee it being the same. There's going out there and finding internationals that can take us to the next level, but also being really in tune and in touch with local talent here in our area. Um, and I think the benefit of a junior college player was something I really love is that they have heavy minutes under their belt. They've played in impactful games and they can come in and really adjust to any system really quickly and they're hungry to play right away. And then there's always something special about a true freshman that comes in and brings their own USA uh, experience at the Development Academy, it'd be ECNL, it'd be club, it'd be whatever it is, or and simply high school, but they bring their own special flavor to our soccer experience. And I think the more diverse your background is on the team, the more diverse ethnically, socially your team is, the better experience it is for everyone and the more team thrives. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, one of the questions people always ask me is, you know, what do, do I need to uh, play in the alphabet soup of leagues, right? The ECNL and MLS Next and all the things, or can I play other places, or could I even just play high school? So do you do you recruit high school games at all? Are you talking to high school coaches during your recruiting process to see, or or how does how does high school soccer fit into the grand scheme of things? Yeah. For us, not to the cliche, we don't rely on the alphabet soup. Uh, we are able to, like I've said five times today, cover every stone and uncover every stone and find the best guys for our program. And our connections in the state with high school coaches is very deep as well. So I feel comfortable reaching out to them and continue those relationships for our coaching staffs. And uh, we do look at high school stuff and our staff is able to get to a few high school games where we hope to be able to do so. Um, Oregon High School happens at the same time as we're playing our season. Uh, so we're strategic about it. And finding the right time to go and watch players and making sure that we listen to the advice that high school coaches are putting in front of us or the recommendations they're putting in front of us. Um, I don't think you need those letters in front of your team to make it to our program. Um, if you fit into our style, if you fit into the culture of your university and you can thrive here. Um, and I would say, you know, most of our players, even with this, this national powerhouse of an AI team are not coming from that background. They are local guys. Uh, they've gone on, they've slipped through the cracks and there's a few that come in and out from a higher level that really take our team to the next level. Uh, well, that's with NAI being able to practice almost year round for us, it's more about development. So we can take you as a really strong player from whatever level you're coming from, spend the most time with you out of any of the college systems and really help you grow and develop over the course of four years. No, oh, that's great. Well, as a parent, one of the questions I always have is, okay, what, what's this going to cost me? Um, <clears throat> I'm not holding you to hard numbers, knowing especially you've only been there, uh, you know, month and a half. 
but can you just give me a, a rough overview of what uh, a student athlete should expect in terms of of cost, maybe what average aid is, both either athletically and or academically, and kind of what what someone should expect if they decide to attend. So I think all in, uh, when I talk all in, we talk about tuition, room, board, fees, all the fun stuff. Our university is about right under 50,000. Um, aid really comes down to the coaching staff. We do not stack academic and athletic aid at Corbin University, so it's up to the coaches to factor in the academics, which we do take into account when we make our financial aid offers. Um, and we work off of just a percentage system of how much we can cover our team. Uh, and we try to get everybody as close to possible as um, affording their budget, you know, it's discussing with families what can be affordable to them, what can make it work, and helping them realize the best financial plan for them is super important. And, and the range is very vast. With NAI and it being soccer scholarship, we are evaluating off of talent. And uh, right or wrong, we could get crushed here. The, the better soccer player you are, the more aid you end up receiving from us. Uh, so it's really up to you to prove yourself on the field and then come and meet with us, interact with our coaching staff, interact with our players, and bolster how we feel about you to increase your aid. Um, and, and a range would be tough, but I think, you know, our scholarships range from about we're offering anywhere in the range of like 20000 to $40,000 in scholarship. Wow, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the school. Obviously, there's folks probably not familiar with Corbin. Uh, folks, you know, uh, you and I couldn't, almost couldn't be farther apart me, with me down here in Florida. But uh, so Corbin is not a school that I'm familiar with. So what kind of drew you to Corbin? What are some of the, the things that you found that have been really make the school stand out? Maybe some things we wouldn't even know just by going through the website. For me, one of the main fun things is the location. Being in Salem, Oregon, uh, we're in a spot where you can truly enjoy the Pacific Northwest. And what I mean by that is um, hour away from Portland. So you can go and experience a big city if that's your cup of tea. Uh, we're also an hour and 10 minutes from the coast. Oregon coast is very unique, very beautiful, completely different than the Florida coast. But um, uh, if, you got, if anybody, or age myself here, date myself here, but if you're familiar with the movie The Goonies, it was filmed on the Oregon coast. Um, so you've got Haystack Rock, you've got other coastal towns, and it's just an awesome place. Um, here nearby, 25 minutes away, we've got a hike where you can experience, I think, 10 waterfalls during your hike. Spend the whole day exploring that. So the outdoors is massive here. Uh, going the other way, uh, you've got Bend about two or three hours away. So location, location is awesome here for Salem. We'll dig deeper, dive deeper into the university. Um, campus is beautiful. Um, sits on a hill, so you're driving uphill or walking uphill, and you get to experience a lot of the outdoors. You've got like the typical Oregon evergreen pine tree situation on campus. Um, some new buildings, um, a beautiful brand new turf field on campus as well. And the university itself, we've got some really strong majors that I think attract a lot of students. So business is top class here, but you're able to dive into some specializations like data stuff, um, but also sport management is a really popular major here. Uh, we do offer kinesiology, but I found lately is a lot of guys are looking to go on that kinesiology path. And something really unique academically is you can pursue a general studies major here. And so maybe you want to get into the world of sport management and kinesiology. You can pursue both of those and almost have like a double major uh, and really decide what you want to focus on after graduation. Um, and then if we went into the University of Justice without talking about our culture, we are a faith-based university. So uh, there is a lot of a Christian lifestyle on campus in the classroom within the team. So I think that's something special that helps us stand out and be unique. So if you've gone to a Christian high school or if you grow up going to church, you're really going to enjoy the environment that we have to offer here on top of really good academics and the soccer program. Um, yeah, so those are maybe the main highlights of uh, what the university has to offer. Okay. Well, let's let's fast forward to, let's say, October. You know, you're in the heart of your season. Kind of walk me through what you see a typical week looking like in terms of when you're going to practice, when are classes usually on campus, maybe your game cadence, just kind of an overall week in the life of a player. What's that going to look like? Yeah. Uh, so our conference, Cascade Conference, is probably the AI the most di um, diverse, but also uh, geographically challenged conference in the whole country. So teams in our conference cover Washington, Oregon, Montana, Idaho. Um, so it's a lot of travel and we play Friday, Saturday, once we get into the thick of conference. So we're the only NAIA conference that plays back-to-back -back days. 
Um, so the travel is a huge component. Time management is massively important to our guys. But I'd say typical week, we're practicing Monday through Thursday, five to seven in the evening. Um, that gives the guys plenty of time to focus on their studies, get out of class, knock out initial homework, but then maybe even get into the weight room or get to athletic training and get their bodies right for practice. Um, there are a few night classes, so sometimes guys are having to leave early to attend night class. That's not a problem. It doesn't affect our, how we view our guys. Um, and then once you get into game day, you know, we're typically for an away Friday match. We're leaving Thursday evening after class, staying in a hotel, playing Friday, staying in another hotel, playing Saturday. So some guys really love that. You get to spend a lot of time with your teammates and you have those away trips that you're going to look back on years later and really remember, spend time in the hotel. You almost feel like a professional with only being a college athlete of uh, that travel hotel, travel, play a game hotel. Uh, a bit spoiled with some food and stuff. So uh, it's just a really fun environment. The guys really enjoy it. But I do think it's crucial that players coming in understand the geographical challenge, the time-consuming nature of our conference, and really stay on top of their studies and use the resources at their hand. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit more uh, about the the team and the, and the soccer side of things. I mean, I guess I could ask you this during the recruiting segment, but it, do you have a roster size in mind that you feel is ideal? Obviously, you may not be at it this year, but one that you're sure. working towards that, that you want to have in place? Yeah, so this year uh, we're at 30 guys, and we'll have just our main uh, first team program. Heading into 2024, we'll be moving up to 40 guys and typical to the NAI, also carrying that reserve team as well. Uh, I think 40 is an ideal number to be able to balance both squads and make sure something unique and special about our reserve team is we make sure that they play 10 games, which not every program across the country that has a reserve team can pull that off. But with the teams nearby, the D3s, the junior colleges, the NAI is close to us, we're really able to play 10 matches and really give those reserves an opportunity to develop in games as well. Um, 40 guys with three or four coaches, depending on the year. We feel like that gives guys enough attention, enough detail in their coaching, and they can really get positive feedback from the entire coaching staff. Well, and you, you mentioned coaching staff. So what, what does your coaching staff look like right now or what it will in the season? Maybe you're still filling out some slots there. but uh, And then obviously it sounds like you see that changing a little bit next year as you go to that developmental squad. Sure. So this uh, this year we'll have a main assistant that will help us day to day all the time. Uh, we'll, we're working on plugging in a second assistant. They'll shortly join us um, as well. And then we will have a full-time goalkeeping coach already settled, done and dusted, that will be able to train the goalkeepers, which is very important. And we have a director of operations that helps us with travel, restaurants, hotels, but is also at training. Um, kind of his secondary role, if you will, is building those personal relationships during breaks or before practice or at the end of practice. So, um, I would say a very deep squad, and hopefully by next this time next year, adding one more member to the staff to be able to cover those 40 players. Okay. Do Are there kind of, for lack of a better term, support staff through the athletic department, uh, you know, strength and conditioning, athletic training, academic advice? Is there anything like that as well for the team? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a strength and conditioning coach. He's not on campus, uh, but he's at a lot of the university. Uh, he's worked with the soccer program for a very long time, and he uh, develops our strength program through an app, and those workouts get sent to our guys. Um, they can also choose to go to his weight room in the offseason and work with them. Uh, and he and I work uh, side by side with developing the best strength program for our guys in season, off season, summer vacation as well. Um, Full time athletic trainer that works with our squad as well. Uh, and then a faculty athletics representative that helps us bridge the gap from academics to athletics. Uh, and then outside of maybe athletic department, but at the um, peer-to-peer tutors and student success center, writing center that can help as well. So uh, I feel in general, our program is very well covered, covering all our bases from before practice, after practice, off season, or in season to make sure they get the best student I could. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. Well, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, I'll ask you to get maybe even more detail here, but how would you describe your style of coaching and the way you see the the team playing in terms of style of play? Sure. Um, I think maybe the cliche word again is right, that the players coach, uh, where we understand that it is a player's game. It's unique with soccer. We don't have timeouts. We can't call plays necessarily. So we spend a lot of our week preparing our guys. I'm obsessive with proper preparation and getting very detailed with our style of play. 
we will focus on our opponent and their strengths and weaknesses, but we want to take it to the next level, really focus on us and being a dominant team. And from a coaching style perspective, that's making sure we can be competitive animals is the terminology we use. So a guy that thrives in our system is super competitive with everything we do in every training session. So we're on the ball a lot. Um, it's conditioning through small sided games, but it's playing our game model on a daily basis. So the guys are very comfortable with our expectations on the ball, off the ball and in transition, but everything's competitive. There's a purpose to it. Uh, the guys know what that is. They know the objective heading into practice. And I just feel that puts us all on the same page. So the guys, if you come into our training session, you know, you're going to compete, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time on the ball and you're going to walk away saying, man, I had a lot of fun during that session. And I, walked out of that session an even better player and an even better competitor um and that and i think that helps us with our style we want to dominate possession we want to dominate the other team um we commit a lot of numbers forward and we spend a lot of tr and then we're very good in transition we have a very good counter shape set up and that allows us to each and every one of us know our expectations during the game and then take it to opposition and really impose our nature on the game oh that's awesome well, Coach, we, we, we've covered a lot of ground, talked about a lot of different things, and uh, I always like to end these with, you know, if you had one piece of advice, one nugget of information, something that you wish every player, parent, family going through this college recruiting process, uh, if you something you'd love them to know, what would that be? Yeah, uh, I love to tell recruits that I do camps or interacting with them is like, take control or seize your recruiting process. Um there are so many opportunities out there, so many options, but you have to take control and really discover what you want to do and where you want to take your collegiate soccer experience. There's a level for almost everyone. Uh, there's so many schools, and I think by seizing control, you've made a decision of how far you want to be from home, what major you want to pursue, the level you want to play at, uh, the type of campus you want to be at, the size of the university, and if, and if you're very on top of that and you go out of your way to contact those coaches that fit your list, and your show initiative, you're going to find the right home for you. And that's kind of like the, the second part of my advice is really pursue the best fit. Uh, we want guys that are going to be here all four years if they're a true freshman or two years if they're a junior college transfer. And we wanted to walk away saying, I loved my time at Corbin University. I loved the team. I loved the coaching staff. And that's all because I really pursued Corbin as the best fit for me academically, socially, and soccer-wise. Awesome advice, Coach. Couldn't agree more. Well, we wish you the best of luck in your first season there. Hopefully, you'll make that return trip to the national tournament, and uh, we'll, we'll follow you and see how you do. All right? So thanks for being here. No problem.